What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? This is the DFS Five Pack. I'm Ryan. This is Matt. We are here today to talk a little DraftKings. Before we get into the DraftKings place of the day, guys, just wanted to let you know that over at Overlay, they put up a specific DFS Five Pack shootout. Twenty entries for today's contest at NBA. We'll get into our plays later on this one. They also got another DFS Five Pack shootout up on NFL, which we'll also get into later today. Uh, late games killed me last night. I don't know what happened for you on overlay, but it was looking pretty good for a little bit, but I got all of the late picks wrong, uh, kicking me out of the money. It is what it is. We move on to today. Yeah. Same here, man. I finished seven, four and one and like two or three of my losses were from that late game. So very unfortunate. Yep. The late night hustle is more like the late night, uh, kicking the groin or whatever you want to call it. So we got ourselves a four-gamer tonight on DK to break it down. So let's go to what can only be described as one of the better games in the NBA to start the year. Uh, we got the two best records in the NBA, Los Angeles Lakers taking on my Milwaukee Bucks. Now, I don't do this a lot, guys, but I'm actively rooting for myself to be wrong on this one. I'm talking about LeBron James. Uh, when the Clippers met up with Milwaukee, I was big on Paul George and Kawhi. Uh, I was happy to watch the Bucks roll, but it was real bad for the DFS night. Here we got LeBron at only 10K. I have to assume he's going to be relatively popular tonight. Whether Anthony Davis plays or not, I don't know that I care. I, I want him on my roster no matter what. This is a national TV game coming off of a loss. And quite frankly, LeBron kind of played like garbage the other day against Indiana. So there's a lot of reasons to expect good LeBron tonight. He's priced down to only 10K. And I don't know about you, Bellman, but for me, this is a type of game where I'm not overly concerned with pace of play, defensive rankings, points against, and things like that. I just expect to get a very good effort, a lot of minutes in a competitive game from LeBron James. I struggle to see the Lakers getting rolled the way the Clippers do. I think this is going to be a good game. And if you're giving me 37 minutes or whatever it is, LeBron James on national TV against the Bucks, like I want this on my side here. For sure. Uh, all great points. It's LeBron James, you know I can always get on board. The only thing I think we differ with is it definitely matters to me whether Anthony Davis plays or not. He's in play regardless, of course, and you can just lock him in no matter what. But it goes from being a guy that you can't get away from if Davis is in to I think there's real questions of whether you go LeBron or Davis if Davis is in. Milwaukee has really struggled against power forward, so I actually like the spot for Davis a little bit more than Braun. That being said, it's LeBron James coming off a loss on a national TV game against the other best team in the NBA. So if he triple doubles here and, you know, puts up a crazy stat line, it'll just be, you know, another notch in his belt because that's who he is. So while being in play regardless, for me, he's a lock of all lock if Davis is out and a really good play if Davis is in is how I put it. I'd say, I think that's the way to think of it in a lot of ways. I also think there's an argument the other way that, Life gets a lot easier for him when Anthony sure. Davis is around because they don't have a lot of other scoring options outside of these two. So when it's just LeBron and you can run Giannis and Middleton and guys that can actually D him up as well as guys can be expected to D up LeBron James. Like you're not going to stop LeBron James. You can only hope to try to contain him. And when Anthony Davis is there, it just makes his life a lot easier because now you can switch Giannis over onto Davis. Um, and again, Middleton's a good defender, but he ain't no LeBron James, right? Yeah, it's a great way to put it. Um, and it, I guess that's a to be like to be determined. We don't know yet. Definitely looked last game like LeBron struggled without Davis out there. It's we talk about this a lot. It's there's pluses and minuses both ways. So I'm with you, man. That's a good point. Yeah, it's an I don't know LeBron national TV coming off of a loss against the other team with the best record. I expect him to be aggressive tonight. I think that's the key thing with LeBron is he can go against anybody. Why? Because he's one of the greatest players we've ever seen do it. I just want him to be assertive and aggressive, and I expect that out of him tonight. No doubt. All right, next up, you want to talk about Clint Capella. I feel like this is a guy that goes back and forth between my guy, then your guy, he's my guy, then he's your guy. Uh, I don't usually like to go after the Clippers because they are one of the best defensive teams in the league. However, their biggest efficiency is with big men. Clint Capella is too big for Montrez Harrell. And he's just too good and too mobile uh, for Zubac. Yeah, I figured you could get on board here. Just a rock solid look at 7,600. Another really good game tonight. Kind of getting lost in the shadows of the Bucks lakers game. You've got, you know, Houston at the Clippers, two Western Conference powers, two teams that believe they can be there at the end. I don't want to stack this game for DFS purposes. I think it's more of a grind-out, you know, hard-fought type game. I think that really fits Capella's mold. 
the Clippers do give it up to big men. He has a really nice history against the Clippers, like 45 DK points plus in each of the past 10 games or something like that, at least 40 plus. So he plays well against them. He's starting to find himself a little bit after a little bit of a down stretch. He's got high 40s and back to back games. I like him quite a bit here. And again, he's normally a guy that, that you like a lot. I guess you said it right. We go back and forth on it. I hate to say it. I love to say it. I view him as a cog in the machine on the slate. Yeah, I mean, he's played the Clippers twice this year already. 14.5 points average, 19.5 rebounds and two blocks. It's kind of about the stat line you expect out of him. You already mentioned the good. He's a very consistent player. Why? Because he doesn't do anything that's not replicable on a daily basis. He's a very good rebounder, hence the reason he averages almost 15 a game. Uh, He's extremely athletic. He's as athletic as almost any big man you're going to find within the NBA. All of his shots come right at the rim. This is not a guy jacking up three pointers that you know you're hoping that they go in. Some days shots don't go in. Like we liked, you know, I talked about it yesterday. I liked Torian Prince and Josh Hart a lot on Monday night, right? No, that was Tuesday night. And Josh Hart hit his first four three pointers. Meanwhile, Torian Prince couldn't hit a water if shooting out of a rowboat. And that just happens to shooters sometimes. Clint Capella is not a shooter. This guy does not take a shot you know, farther than five feet away from the basket. So what he does on a nightly basis is very replicable, which is exactly my kind of player. Yeah, exactly. All right, man, let's move along to the next one. So I'm going to stick with this game, and I'm going to go to another guy on the flip side of the ball. That is Sweet Lou Williams. Now, one thing, and it's probably the only thing he has in common with Lou Williams, or uh, not Lou Williams, the only thing he has in common with Clint Capella, they both were in a little bit of a rough patch, but over the last two games, they've kind of gotten out of this mini slump that they've been in. Uh, So that's a good thing. I like Lou Williams in competitive games. This shapes up to be a competitive game. We can only go by our predictions early in the day, what Vegas says, what we think, and you should expect this one to be a game. Now, if one team hits a bunch of threes and the other one doesn't, doesn't mean it will be, but it should be early in the day, and that's the kind of game where I like Sweet Lou. His price tag is more than fair today at 5,900. He basically averages almost uh, going for, what is it? You know, if he's 6K, you know, close to 6 x five and five and a half on something like this. In the two games against the Rockets this year, he's averaging 23, 6, and 5. Um, we don't have a lot of value early in the day on this one. So while I don't view Lou as a must, you know, he's a guy who's actually a positive benefit to your salary cap today. So we'll put him right in kind of about the average price of what you're looking at for a day like this. And this game does have... A little bit of appeal from a DFS perspective and a couple of players, and he's one of the guys I'm looking at. I imagine Lou gets a ton of love tonight. He's a player that, that people gravitate towards. The DFS industry likes him a lot. He's really cheap for who he is. I have a feeling, especially as you mentioned, we don't have a ton of value yet. He just makes a lot of sense here. I don't want to spend big money on pieces in this game. Sure, if you want to you know, rock and roll with a hard Paul George, whoever, do your thing. I like the secondary pieces from this game, namely Clint Capella and Lou Williams. So glad you mentioned Williams here. I have a feeling at this $5,900 price tag, and we talked about this yesterday. Kinda, yes, we did. How, you know exactly where I'm going with this, how you know pricing is really that mental, like, just like everything else in life is really that mental game. And if Lou were 6200 here, he'd be significantly, maybe not significantly, but he'd be less popular than he's going to be at under 6 k People are not used to seeing him under 6K. He's a better player than that. Uh, Rock and roll in all formats. Agreed. And uh, if you missed what we were talking about yesterday, basically it's the reason that they price stuff at a store at $19.99 as opposed to $21. Ultimately, are you ever going to notice that dollar in your pocket? Probably not. But when you're walking down the store and you see something at $19.99 and you feel like it should be over $20, you're like, oh, I'm getting a sweet deal right here, even though it's not a big deal. If Lou Williams was $6,500 today, his ownership might be 10% less. But really, what is that one three-point shot? Exactly, man. We see that very much eye to eye, which is awesome. All right, next up, uh, your boy Murray. You're a monster fan of this guy. The only argument I have against Murray is not Murray himself. It's Coach Pop. And all I want to say is, dear Coach Pop, don't 17 minutes us again. We brought him up the other day, and inexplicably, he played only 17 minutes that night against the Cavs. You know, However, okay. right, in the four games since the minutes um, restriction has been lifted, he's played 29 plus in three of four. Uh, he's got 30 plus DK points. Sorry, I misprinted this one and put minutes twice uh, on the slide. But he's gone for 30 DK points in three of four. 
I have no reason to believe he won't play his minutes tonight. Uh, they, there's no game yesterday. There's no game tomorrow. Just don't coach pop us. Please coach pop. Was definitely in the back of my mind. and gave me a little cause for pause. I'm wanting to bring him up, but I just like him so much here. It's such a good spot. Insert guard against Brooklyn here. Again, another guy under 6K that's got big time upside at this price. His DK, his average points per game isn't anything special on this price, but when you look and see how high his high games have been, you realize how, you know, how, how great of a ceiling he has here. I think this is a game that might go under the radar and maybe a little bit overlooked, and it has DFS upside on both sides. You know how big of a fan I am of Murray. It is definitely concerning the last time we brought him up. He only played 17 minutes. Made me, made us look foolish. Um, not that we were the only ones on him, but that's always very discouraging. However, well, he was good, though, in the 17 sure. minutes. Like, he didn't kill a lineup to the point you couldn't win, which was fortunate. But it was just unfortunate that instead of 29, he played 17. Exactly. And, well, sure, that could happen again because it happened to us the last time. We don't expect that. As you mentioned, and I looked into this, he's played good minutes in the game since then. They need him. Guards destroy Brooklyn. I think this game is close, competitive. I love his upside here. At this price, I think that he's viable in cash games, but I still like him more in tournaments because he's risky. Yeah, I don't mind him in any format. Uh, good chance he makes my cash lineup tonight. So there are good games tonight from a real-life basketball perspective, i.e. Lakers-Bucks, one of the games of the year so far, and then Rockets-Clippers, excuse me, is also a really, really good game. However, this game is set up way better for DFS points. Yeah. Both Brooklyn and San Antonio give up above average DFS points to most of the positions on the floor, um, you know, including Brooklyn. You know, As I wrote and you mentioned, they have been getting killed by point guards this year, allowing the third most DFS points to the point guard position this year. Uh, this game is, again, sometimes real-life basketball and wanting to watch it. For a lot of you guys who don't have the NBA League Pass like we do, you get a couple of national TV games here. And it's fun to actually be able to watch your pieces because a lot of us who do have League Pass, we can watch every game. But a lot of you guys don't. You have lives. You have other things to spend your money on. So you want to get your DFS plays on you know, good games like this. But I like LeBron. But like Lakers and Bucks, these are two of the best defenses in basketball. And don't you expect like eight efforts from the defense today? That doesn't mean great DFS points. And I like the stars in that game, not necessarily the auxiliary pieces. I don't want to say I'm surprised you brought up LeBron because that's not the right word, but I didn't think it was like a lock you were going to bring him up because of the point you just said. Like, I could see that game being very defensive oriented. Now, if Davis is out, LeBron will get his anyways. And even if Davis is in, LeBron could be awesome. But I'm with you. Like, if I were stacking a game, it would not be that game or the Houston game. No, I mean, again, the Bucs, I believe, are still the number one rated defensive efficiency team in the league. We know the Lakers play really, really good defense. Coming off losses, national TV against the other teams with the best record, the only guys I really have interest in this game are the Stars. Like, I am not interested in trying to go to second. Now, again, it's different if Anthony Davis is out because the Lakers have to have other guys step up then. But I kind of expect him to give it a go tonight. Uh, so that is, again, that's a major, you know, major difference. If, if Davis is out, I could see the Lakers getting rolled here also. I already told you that I could see that. Um, I don't expect it, but I still think that this game probably means a little bit more to Milwaukee than the Lakers. Hmm. Yes, but only because I think Milwaukee cares about every game. It's one of the things I love about them. One of the things that's so exciting about a Bucks fan right now, to watch them fight. When they gave up their win streak last time out and they were down like whatever it was, 12 points with like a minute and a half to go and to watch them fight so hard to beat Dallas in a regular season game like that. I mean, that is the kind of thing that really gets you excited about your team. The Lakers sure. clearly care about the regular season, but it's postseason is bust for them. I think Milwaukee just flat out cares about every game because that's just who Giannis is. LeBron's been doing this for 100 exactly. years. Exactly. That's the difference. It's not that LeBron like doesn't care. It's just that he's been around so long, so much longer than Giannis that you can't put all your energy in it. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly there. Now, I expect all of his energy tonight, and that's sure. why I like him here. But I get your point, too. If Anthony Davis is out, you know, I'm not shocked to see Milwaukee roll on him. If they get hot from three like they got hot from three against the Clippers, they can roll up on anybody. And without Anthony Davis, the Lakers aren't very deep. No, they're, they've got good pieces like around LeBron and Davis we talked about, but we talked about this yesterday or the day before with Davis and how 
you know, it, they're just teams are built in so different ways. The Bucks have one megastar and then a ton of a bunch of really, really good players. The Lakers have two of those stars, but then none of those like really, really good players. They've got a bunch of average players that are nice fillers around them. But if you take one of those stars out, it kind of looks like those Cav rosters LeBron led. A lot, you know, I, I don't disagree with that point at all. You know, especially with Kuzma not playing great yeah. and being injured tonight and stuff like that. Like, I like JaVale McGee. I think he's a solid role player with the Lakers, but, you know, he's not a star. No, he's not. So, all right, guys, uh, we'll probably get into a little bit more detail on members only. If you want the members only videos, go to the website and sign up for a membership. Uh, welcome aboard to Robert, our new lifetime customer last night. Let's go roll today, guys, and have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys.